Okay, welcome to take two of our Year 12 Physics Flipped videos. Um, this video is going to look at um, the motion in two dimensions topic and the first subtopic, projectile motion, and we'll look in the first part, or part A, at the horizontal and vertical components. Um, I just thought I'd add a few reasons why we might be interested in studying projectile motion. These are not by any means the only reasons, but if we want to study the, the trajectory of ballistics, um, if we want to you know, look at launching rockets and analysing those, um, we need to have a good understanding of projectile motion. It's also extensively used in sports, so in sports like golf, cricket and tennis I use just as three examples. When you see the sort of hawkeye that they use in cricket for LBD, uh, leg before wicket decisions, and the... Um, Hawkeye they use in tennis to judge in and out calls. It's actually all using the math and the analysis of projectile motion to calculate those. Okay, um, just before I start, um, I'll just talk a little bit about the structure of these notes. On the left hand side, we have the intended student learning. So they're the things that you need to be able to do. That's the sort of checklist for things that you could be asked to do in a test or an exam or to demonstrate even in a PRAC report. Um, so in your, you can use those as a checklist of the skills that you need to make sure you can do. On the right hand side are the key ideas and in the boxes underneath, we have sort of explore these key ideas in more detail. So we might have some notes, we might have some examples or some example calculations, um, may just have some pictures that really demonstrate or some links that you can go to really demonstrate some of the key ideas associated with these concepts that you need to learn about. So the starting point for projectile motion is thinking about multiple image photographs. Um, back when I was in high school, we used to go and throw a projectile in a dark room and expose, hold the aperture down the camera so we got this long exposure and in theory every time the light flashed we'd get a little image of where the projectile was which we could use to analyse its motion. Um, we'd have to send them off to get processed at a photo lab and usually they'd come back two weeks later and they wouldn't have developed and worked out properly anyway so the teacher would tell us what it should look like and we'd analyse that anyway. Um, these days we do it much more using either motion sensors or, or simulations. Anyway, I hope you've had a look at this Monkey and Hunter video link that I put up on Edmodo. Um, it's a really good introduction into what we're going to talk about. So, the key thing is that gravity, once a projectile is in the air, for lack of a better term, gravity is the only force that acts on it. And gravity only acts in a vertical direction. So that only acts in the vertical direction. There's no force acting in the horizontal direction. So what we see is in the horizontal direction, the velocity will be constant. And we can see this here from this simulation of a multiple image photograph. If this was flashing at a regular time interval, you can see in each time interval, it's traveled one square in the horizontal direction. So the horizontal component remains constant and we can see that because there's a constant distance in the horizontal direction between the flashes. In the vertical direction, it is traveling further and further and further and further and further between each flash because it's accelerating, so its velocity is increasing, so it travels further and further. But what we also note, and you should have noted in the Monkey and Hunter video, is that the vertical displacement is independent of the horizontal. So what we mean there is this one here has fallen the same amount as this one here in the same time. And down here, this one here falls at the same time. So in a sense, one that's rolled off horizontally like this one versus one that's dropped would both hit the floor at the same time. Because the only thing that affects the vertical velocity is gravity and the gravity is acting or the acceleration due to gravity is the same in both cases. Um, just have here on the picture, a picture here on the right of a, um, this was um, demonstrating sort of a multiple image photograph, but it wasn't done using 
um, obviously a traditional multiple image photograph technique. It was done using an app from Sony called Motion Shot. So Lee and Sebastian demonstrated that in the lab for me. So oh, you don't have to, but if you'd like to download the Motion Shot app and have a go at that, um, constructing one of those multiple image photographs, you can do that. As I said, it's much easier to do with modern cameras that have high speed video and, and even motion sensors and all that sort of thing as well. Okay, last week I asked you to look at vectors. Um, and the reason vectors are really important in this topic is that if we are going to consider the horizontal and vertical components of motion, we can consider those like vectors. And if we want to look at what the overall velocity is, or the overall speed, we then need to be able to combine the horizontal and vertical components to work out the total velocity. So in essence, we need to be able to do a vector addition to do this. Um, later on, we'll talk about how we, if we're given a velocity, we resolve it. So we work out what is its horizontal and vertical component. I'm going to do that on a slide further on though. So hopefully, I think from what I saw, everyone was able to do this. We basically use the, uh, the tip to tail or whatever rule we call it. So if we want to add up the horizontal component there and the vertical component there, we go from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. Um, these are at right angles to each other, so we can use the usual right angle trig. So basically, the total velocity in this case will be like a Pythagoras problem. So that will be equal to the square root of vh squared plus vv squared. So for example, if the horizontal component of our velocity here was four meters per second, and the vertical component was three meters per second, the total velocity would be equal to the square root of four squared plus three squared, which would equal square root of 16 plus 9, which would equal the square root of 25, which would equal 5 meters per second. A Pythagorean, Pythagorean triplet, for those who are familiar. Um, in a sense, that's our speed, not quite our velocity because we haven't got the direction. But then we could use our standard, I won't do this, but we could use our tan equals opposite over adjacent or now that we know the velocity, we could use sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Or we could use cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, if you like to work out what that angle was there. And that would tell us the angle above the horizontal. I'm assuming you all can handle some right angle trigs, so I haven't worked out exactly what that is at the moment, because I haven't got a calculator in my hand. Okay, so the next thing we need to be able to do is on a diagram showing the path of a projectile, draw vectors to represent the velocity and the acceleration of the projectile, the projectile at any instant. So obviously we'll do the velocity first. The velocity vector will basically run at a tangent to that direction line at any point. So that the velocity vector, so this is the total velocity vector, would look. Just redo that one, that was a bit sloppy. Like that. And like that. Those purple lines would represent the velocity. As gravity is the only force acting, the, the speed, if you like, the direction will change, but the magnitude of the velocity will, not, will be the same at these equal height points. 
So it will lose velocity on the way up, obviously due to gravity, but whatever it loses, it'll gain on the way back. So this line here will be the same as this line here in length. This one will be the same length as this and so on. Um, I think it's this is also useful here to just think about the horizontal component of velocity, this red line, that will not change. That will be constant because there is no force acting in the horizontal direction. So the red line on that top one would just overlay the purple line. So I won't draw that because that might, might confuse it. But in each case, the horizontal component of velocity remains constant. But what we see is the vertical component of the velocity going up. On the way up, it decreases because gravity is working against it. So it's getting slower and slower and slower. At the highest point, the vertical velocity is zero. So there is no vector there. Um, but then, once it starts coming down, gravity causes it to speed up. So we get an increase in the vertical component. And obviously, where the projectile is the same height, as I said before, that vertical component of the velocity is the same. So that vertical and horizontal part is a little bit more than what it's asking for there, but I think that's um, quite a powerful way to think about it. So finally, what is the, how would we show the acceleration? And normally I'd like to get people up on the board and ask them to draw this, can be, this bit, can be a bit confusing. But remember, gravity always acts downwards in the vertical direction, and it is constant. The force due to con gravity is constant. Sorry, the, no, let's just say the acceleration due to gravity is constant, and it's obviously constant at 9.8 metres per second in a downwards direction. So if that straight down... I think I've got them in the same length. It's a bit harder to get the length the same when I've got. So all these black lines that I'm drawing should be the same length. If they're not, I apologise and I'm sure someone will tell me. So that there, AG, is our acceleration due to gravity, and that will be constant.